welcome to the hangar. Me and I are uh, just getting stuck back into the Grumman project today. Well, I'm not sure how much wrenching you're going to end up doing. There's a very comfortable couch on the other side of the hangar that I think uh, this one's going to go and occupy. So, uh, anyway, we'll give you some updates on the Grumman here. Okay, you can go have a nap. Um, the old cylinders that we removed and you saw in the last video, um, we did the valve uh, inspection on them to discover that they're worn out. We had a good look at the bore, discovered that that was pretty worn out. They're chrome cylinders and after a bit of discussion we decided that they were not going to be economical to repair and very likely wouldn't actually be over able to be overhauled. So kind of got rid of those. Um, cleaned up rocker boxes, intake tubes, so all of those are done and uh, should be really nice. All of those are done and should be really nice. We have a great big bag of uh, new gaskets and seals and uh, O-rings and hoses and clamps, so that's all going back on. And as you can see here, I have two uh, new superior um, Millennium Cylinder assemblies, so we'll be going ahead and installing those on the aircraft. We've had a good look at the uh, camshaft again, we looked at that in the last video, so we're happy there. Um, I do have a video on, you know, you're making the decision to change your cylinder. In that I look a lot at the uh, instructions for checking ring end gaps uh, to make sure that you have the correct clearances there and looking at the, the overhaul manual to make sure that you put it all together correctly, torque it all correctly. So I'm not going to dive deeply into all of that again uh, today. Instead what we'll do is, is just actually get these out of the box. Um, I will obviously be doing all of those checks, but we don't necessarily need to see that all duplicated here. Um, so I'll just I'll check them, that'll be fine. Then we'll bring the camera back in and, uh, and, and we'll go ahead and get them installed on the aircraft so you can kind of see the wiggling and twisting and holding your tongue in the right direction to make all that work. So that'll kind of be today's focus. So we better get cracking right at it. Okay, new rocker box valve covers. Uh, we're not going to be using those because we've got the Lycoming matched ones that we're going to use. Rings, you need to check the end gaps for those. Uh, rocker shaft, cylinder base gasket, intake gasket, pushrod gaskets, exhaust gasket, clamps for holding the pushrods in. Paperwork, better file that with uh, all the rest of the paperwork for this thing. New piston. Okay, so that's all in the top of the box. Okay, and we'll use the piston for pushing the um, rings into the cylinder so that we can verify that the end gaps are correct. Um, having to adjust pretty much all of those these days. So look at that. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, this top section comes out, and the cylinder's underneath. There we have it. Very nice. Always been really impressed with the quality of these cylinder assembly kits. So we'll go ahead, do all our checks to get that installed. Okay, first cylinder assembly has been installed on the aircraft and we're just getting ready to put the second one on. 
Second cylinder area, we've cleaned up nicely all around where the cylinder is going to seal. Uh, we're still supporting the connecting rod here with some rags so it doesn't mark or get damaged or anything like that. We're going to remove the two uh, nuts that are torqued down here on the through studs to get the cylinder on. We've got new uh, gaskets for the cylinder return oil drain lines. And we'll go over to the bench, take a look at the uh, cylinder and prepare it for going back on the aircraft. Okay. New cylinder assembly here, one already on the aircraft. Just got a small piece of wood here. That just allows that to stand upside down and upright for me. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the um, rings installed on the piston. Uh, we'll start with the oil control ring. And it's got a... Uh, a spiral spring that goes inside. So install that and then put the uh, opening 180 degrees from from this connection here on the uh, next portion. Uh, I just use automotive style um, uh, tool for expanding the rings smartly and evenly so that we don't break them and that gets those into place nicely. Okay, so then from there, make sure we've got them top up. Bring that down so we're 90 degrees from the two openings on the oil control ring. And then top up 180 degrees. You don't want all the ring ends lining up. Um, so you'll lose quite a bit of compression if that's the case. There they are all on and ready to go. All of the rings, both cylinders needed filing again in accordance with uh, the service instructions from Superior. Uh, again, uh, especially on these 320 cylinders, I just use an automotive style ring compressor. I find it works uh, very, very well for this next step. Okay, puppy's inside, isn't that right? Yep. Oil cans topped up. I'll give this a second go. I guess I should have filmed the first cylinder I put on because it went very well. But uh, normally I try and film the first thing and I find it goes badly. So I guess it doesn't matter. It's just whenever you're doing it on camera. Uh, I do have a set of uh, ring compressors that you you know, can do this on the engine, um, and in many applications that's necessary, especially if there's uh, rings below the, the, the piston pin. Um, and uh, so sometimes I'll use that, but when I'm doing this sort of a job, I normally don't have any issue. Assembling the piston into the cylinder with the rings, and then putting the entire assembly on the aircraft as one unit. There we go, that was a little more stubborn than usual. But there we go, we've got the piston in with all the rings. Now we just walk the piston back so that that's aligned and open and allow us to get the uh, piston pin in. We actually want the other side out. A little more without pulling the piston back out. Definitely done that before. Now we'll get the new piston pin and put it in. 
Okay, brand new piston pin. I pretty much always change the piston pin. Actually, I always change the piston pin. The old ones are normally always marked and, and fitted, so just get the brand new one. Depending on how long they've been in this wax paper sometimes, um, yeah, like this one's probably been around a little while, it's stuck to it. A little bit of varsal. We'll uh, soften it up uh, quite nicely and, and, and clean it up. Then we can give it a good oil before sliding it through. See, that takes it off quite, quite easily. There we go, that's all that cleaned up. A little bit of oil. There we go. Now, we must absolutely not forget the cylinder base gasket. That's going to make life really miserable if we do. A new one comes with the gasket set with the cylinder assemblies, along with uh, the new valves, new piston, new rings. Uh, you get all the gaskets, you get new rocker shaft, um, you don't get the rocker arms, you get a new valve cover, you don't get the piston pin. So piston pins we bought new, but we've got to make sure we get this gasket on before we put it on the aircraft. Right, now that's ready to go over to the plane and get installed. Okay, obviously we want to have a good look around, make sure we haven't got anything that we're leaving behind uh, that shouldn't be inside the engine. Get the piston pin pulled out of the way. Hold up the connecting rod. Piston pin pushed through. All of our rags out, we're on the floor, gasket is on, square everything up, a little bit of even pressure, sometimes you can just start it off by just squeezing, yep, like so. There it is, down and on. Now we go through, do our torque sequence. We've got to pre-lube the, um, the threads before we tighten things down, follow the torque pattern and, and torque amounts on the engine, and, uh, and then obviously install the rest of the um, uh, baffles and uh, intakes, uh, exhaust. The big one will be removing and getting the oil out of the lifters, hydraulic lifters, and then setting the push rods in and checking the drive tap it clearance so we'll we'll do a bit of that today as well so that you can see that okay so we're going to go ahead i've got the nuts put on loosely um for the lycomings it's a uh, you really want to make sure these are well lubricated um to go on this is a really important step uh we've really disturbed the engine changing a cylinder and if this preload isn't right uh bearing slippage of the of the, of a main bearing on the co connecting sorry on the crankshaft or or loss of 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 load on the cylinder studs could cause engine failure you know if we spin a bearing in there we're going to lose oil pressure if we shear one of these studs we're going to lose a cylinder so this is really critical so they got to be well lubricated um like homing specifies 50 weight oil 90% of it uh, mixed with uh um, STP or you could use Parker thread sealer. Uh, I've also heard that um, cam guard uh, is acceptable for for mixing in there as well um, As opposed to the STP that is So torque sequence now it's really important that we bring the torque up um, Correctly we're using a current calibrated torque wrench So this is set to 25 foot-pounds. We start one two three four 
on the outside, then we bring them up to 50 pounds, then we torque the, the small ones to 25. Um, and it, it says in the book that there's no uh, particular torque pattern for those. It's, it's optional, but I just do it the same way. So, always tricky, and you gotta, you know, I, I'm restricted in my movement here, so I'm trying to stop before I hit the baffle there, because I don't want to get a false um, click on the torque wrench and think that I've got the preload set. There it is. And you want to, you want it to click while you're moving. There we go. A little more room on that one. These two should be pretty nice as well. You know, sometimes we can't avoid removing cylinders uh, because the old ones just are not safe anymore, and that was the case here. We also had a legal regulatory requirement to remove them. See, that wasn't good. I, I really, your startup torque is higher than your moving torque, so you want it to click while you're moving. Um, I might just back that off and, and do that one again. But we just got to be really careful because e even with best intentions and, and being diligent, uh, th this can go wrong and we can't just pull over. Okay. All right, so now we go to 50 foot pounds, same sequence. If you don't put the lubricant on, you're going to reach your torque setting but there won't be anywhere near as much stretch in those bolts. And it'll subject them to loads they're not supposed to be getting, and it'll fatigue them, and that's how you end up with a failure. Very happy with that one. Happy with that one. Awesome. Okay, now we can do the small ones up to 25 foot pounds. All right, there we go. That's that bit complete. Okay, I didn't explain, I don't think, this bit very well. The stud here and the one below it, um, half inch through bolts. Uh, so they go through into the other cylinder that we've changed on the other side. So I'm torquing both sides of uh, this stud to make sure that they're tight and making sure that both are oiled. Um, if you're only changing one of, say, just this cylinder and not the other side, you would still want to go over and, and torque that other side. Some stuff is a little ambiguous about just how involved that should be, whether they should be torqued simultaneously, whether they should be torqued, um, you know, first by removing and, and re-oiling the, the, the stud on the opposite side if you're not changing the cylinder. But I've changed the cylinders both sides that... that coincide with this so it's been cleaned up it's been oiled on both sides it's been torqued from both sides to make sure that we've got the load so hopefully that clarifies that okay in order to do the drive tappet clearance we need to get the tappets out so that we can get the oil removed from them this can be sometimes very frustrating and other times it'll go quite smoothly I find a piece of 40 thou lock wire works quite nicely to remove straight piece right in the hole here normally a bit of side load on it <laughs> I jinxed myself 
That was coming out quite nicely. We'll bring that out. Or just a, a sharp 90 degree bend and you can just get on the back of it and get it pulled out. There we go. That was challenging. Okay. So that gets that out. Now the 90 degree hook works better for getting the lift body out. There it is. Okay, so that's got oil in it so it doesn't compress all the way. So we literally pull that apart, flush the oil out, then we'll check the the, the spring uh, to make sure you basically want it to work like that. We haven't cleaned it yet, but, but that's looking good. Then we'll put it back in. Then we can compress this fully, right? There's no oil trapped under this. Um, thick oil, cold oil to try and force out of this lifter. It'll be dry when we put it back in. Okay, so it's just air in there. So we can compress that to fully close the, uh, the hydraulic lifter and that'll allow us to check the dry tap at clearance. So I'm gonna give this a rinse over here then we'll put it all back in. Uh, we've already done this side. So we'll put this back in and then we can insert the rockers and uh, uh, push rods so that we can check the dry tap. It. Okay, so we have the uh, hydraulic lifters installed again, dry. We've got the push rods put back in. No tubes right now, we're just checking things. Make sure you install the cap here on the exhaust uh, valve. I have actually found those missing uh, <laughs> on aircraft before. Um, we're gonna put the rocker arm on, get the new rocker shaft in and slid across. The engine needs to be at top bit center for doing this. There we go. Right, now we can check the dry tap it clearance. Okay, drive tap it clearance. That exhaust valve is above the 80 thou. Intake is below and above 28. So that one's okay, this one is no good. So now we're gonna have to get that back out, remove that. There should be a part number on them that we can uh, determine its length and then we can get a slightly longer one in and recheck it and um, get that into tolerance. Okay, we have our new push rod assemblies. Uh, Kdex Air Supply has got those for us. So remember we had checked this uh, one here and we found that the dry tablet clearance was too great. Same with the exhaust valve on the number two cylinder. So now we've got the longer push rods. Now that we've got the longer push rods, we can go ahead and install them and recheck that clearance. So this was the intake on the number three cylinder, there we go. Okay, dry tap at clearance, 28 thou to 80. So 28, that fits nicely. Now the 80 doesn't, perfect. So let's put that right into spec. Okay, here's just a different angle so you can see that. So we've got the new push rod in on the intake of the number three cylinder. It's dry valve. My feeler gauges, there's 28 thou clears through there nicely, there's the 80, no longer fits. So we've got good dry tappet clearance setting there now. So now I can go ahead and I'll put the push rod tubes in with the new seals and everything else. Okay, the uh, cylinder kits come with new uh, O-rings and gaskets for the push rod tubes, so we'll go ahead and pull these off here and uh, install the, the O-rings here, get that all put in. I find a little bit of dielectric grease also really helps that installation. Okay, once the two push rods are in, we get a new clamp, holds them down, sort of spring loaded, goes in this way around. 
I seem to have an upset puppy here. The locking piece to lock the nut, and then the nut. So the tangs go over there. What's wrong, puppy? I guess this is not exciting enough. Okay. So, yeah, you can see it's spring-loaded here right now, uh, and then the tangs of the locking uh, washer are in that way. Once we've got this all tightened down and torqued, we go ahead and bend this piece out, and that locks the nut. So I'm just going to snug that up with the wrench loosely for right now. And then I'm going to go see what's up with the puppy. So we get our calibrated torque wrench, and we do these up to... Do those up to 96 inch pounds. Now we can lock the tab over to uh, prevent that from coming undone. And then don't forget our little caps go into the rocker shaft. Perfect. Do the same thing on the other side, and then we're ready to continue assembling the engine. Rocker covers come with the superior cylinders, but uh, same as we've got uh, the real Lycomings and still two Lycoming cylinders on here, I just cleaned up and painted the uh, Lycoming cylinders, um, sorry, Lycoming rocker covers, and we're going to reuse the uh, silicone gaskets that are already here. So we can get that put on. New hardware comes. I'll just put a couple in for now just to locate uh, the screws and um, and get the cover in. Obviously there's a few attachments from uh, magneto harnesses and stuff like that so there's no point putting all of these down tight right now and uh, maximum of 50 inch pounds on these screws. Okay, I've uh, gone ahead and cleaned up the uh, inner cylinder baffles here, so we'll get this installed, goes in this way here, this hook comes through, and it stands up between the two cylinders, and then you get this piece on here, which is always lots of fun. Okay, these things are a bit of a pain to get on, so a little bit of lock wire uh, under the hook allows you to pull up while you use your other hand to push down in the center and then lever it over. It makes, makes getting it on really easy. Um, maybe I'll redo that so you can see. How much do you want to bet this makes it very challenging to repeat? So good for taking it off, so you can see it's off there. So once you've got that baffle in, centered, put that down, put your piece of lock wire through. You just need to apply a bit of downward pressure on the spring there, pull up, and over. There we go. I used to try using like vice grips, uh, or not vice grips, sorry, uh, my big channel locks to grab it. And you could do it, but, but I found that that works much, much better. Perfect. Okay, welcome back to the hangar. It's been almost a month um, since we were working on the Grumman here. We had a lot of parts delay, and uh, that's kind of ground the project to a bit of a halt. So, picking up where we left off, carrying on with finishing up our cylinder install. Most of the cylinders are installed themselves, and um, dry tappets have been checked uh, and, and everything like that. So, we're now just replacing intake tubes and uh, hooking up primer lines and, and carrying on with that, so... Okay, got new new intake gasket, cleaned up painted intake, new intake uh, gasket here as well. Got new uh, Lycoming LW155928-28 clamps. Those hold uh, the intake on here, 
and then we've got new LW25-125 bolts to go through the intake as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get this button up, clean up the intake, get that done. Um, we've got a couple of springs to hook on our baffles, put our primer fittings like this into the new cylinders, hook them up, change the crankshaft seal, put a new dipstick seal on the dipstick tube because that was leaking, and uh, that's kind of it. Everything else is back together. Okay, we also have an SL68760 to replace the um, worn through rocker on rocker. Man, I, it is too hot. Oil drain tube on the cylinder as well. And uh, we've got new clamps again, new gear clamps for securing that to the new hose that we have down here. So we're just going to button some of that up. Hopefully this is all done. These, that the baffles don't uh, chafe them and cable ties, like people like to put cable ties on them and things like that and make them wear through them and that, that's what had happened with the old one here. I quite often find them cut um, and leaking oil obviously so yeah it's a nice one there. We've got both of those around the right way. So I think basically now it's just finishing up. I think we've got enough footage of what's going on with the uh, cylinder swap. Hopefully that's been really helpful. Um, as always, you know, make sure you consult the manuals, make sure you look up the torques, you know, I'll double check and, and tighten these correctly with a certified calibrated torque wrench, get my primer lines in, get my baffles done up. But I think we've got enough for today, um, and I think I've done enough for today. It's, uh, it's really hot, and uh, it's the end of the day, it's getting late in the day. So, a uh, good point to stop, I think, so I don't uh, make a silly mistake. Um, yeah, anyway, hopefully we can go through all this footage soon, make a nice video for you all. So thanks very much, stay safe, get lots of flying done, happy tailwinds everyone, we'll talk to you all later.